Welcome back. I'm Shane. This is Relative Time. And today we're going to take a look at the Vario Empire Chronograph, a 1930s Art Deco inspired Mecha Quartz Chrono, which is probably a lot to take in. So let's back up a sec. Vario is a small microbrand based out of Singapore, and they're run by Ivan and Judy. They originally started out as a strap company, but over the years they've slowly started venturing into their own line of watches. Primarily whenever inspiration strikes Ivan to create something interesting. I've reviewed a number of their watches and they're definitely one of my favorite micro brands. And one of the things I always love about their watches is that they're always a little different, yet very interesting and still affordable. For example, when Vario decided they wanted a field watch in their lineup, they didn't rehash the same World War II design everyone else has. Rather, they took inspiration from the original trench watches of World War I. Again, creating something different, yet very interesting and still affordable. The watch we're going to look at today is their Empire Chronograph, and it's basically a chronograph version of their Empire watch they put out a few years ago, which is actually one of my favorite dress watches. If you've watched the channel for a while, you know that I like dress watches that are a little more visually interesting and complex. So when I got a chance to review the prototype for the original, I was immediately taken by its Art Deco inspired design. It wound up being a watch that I kept thinking about and just kept coming back to in my mind until months later when I eventually bought one. Anyway, that's enough of story time, but before we get any further, I do need to let you know that this watch was given to the channel. And as far as I know, Vario isn't asking for it back, so that's why the promotional tag is up. That said, let's talk specs. If you're familiar with the original Empire, the specs of the new chronograph are practically the same. It's just that they added the chrono pushers to the chronograph. So this is still very much a dress watch format, with a width of 38 millimeters and a lug to lug of 46, making it ideal for a variety of wrist sizes, even those that are a bit on the slim side. You're also looking at a fairly thin profile with a total thickness of 11.2, and it's fairly lightweight at 62 grams on its leather strap. It also has a 20 millimeter lug width, just in case you feel like changing a strap, as well as a flat sapphire with AR, and it's all powered by Seiko VK64 Mecha Quartz movement. The only weak point with this one, if you can actually call it a weak point, is its 50 meters of water resistance. And the reason I say that is because this is very much a dress watch, and at that point, it's perfectly acceptable. Now, that said, let's move on to the things I don't like here, the bad so to speak. And up first, let's talk about the contrast and readability. And let me be clear here that what I'm about to say is going to be specific to this colorway, which is the gunmetal tuxedo gold. I think the others with the silver or black centers aren't going to have the same issue as this one with the gray. Now, this is a gorgeous watch in person, and I can't stress that enough. But there's a lot going on here, and the thin profile of the gold hands can occasionally get lost in this sea of textures underneath it. Some of you may have noticed this already, and I think in some of these shots it's going to be very apparent. Although in person, it's not quite as bad as some of these shots make it out to be. Mostly because I'm shooting this in a dark room, and there isn't much for the hands to reflect. One thing I noticed, and I think this shot in particular is a great way to show you, is that if you compare how the watch looks when it's directly straight at the camera versus, say, an angle where there's just a slight amount of glare, I think it's much more readable at those angles. With just a little bit of glare, all those gold highlights just seem to pop and come alive. And I think that does show that the contrast issue is going to be situational with this colorway. The only other real negative I have is with the case back, although this is an issue that has been fixed. But since some of you may catch it while watching this, I should point it out. The case back is a screw down closed case back with what I think is the Empire State Building, an icon of the Art Deco era. The case back on the chronograph is actually very similar to that of the automatic. In fact, it's too similar. If you zoom in and look, you'll see the word automatic on the case back for the Mecha Quartz. So that's a screw up to be sure, but as far as screw ups go, a misprint on the back of the case back is a minor one. And the thing is, Ivan from Vario is the one who pointed this out to me. Shortly after I got the watch, I got an email from him. He said it was an oversight on his part and was particularly embarrassed about missing it. Yet, to his credit, he was very transparent about it. He not only notified everyone who'd bought one, but he also pulled all the current watches from being sold until he could fix it, as well as send a replacement case back to anyone who'd already bought one. I've actually had this watch for a while. 
I was planning on doing the review months ago, but because of this issue, I haven't asked if I could hold off, just until he had it fixed. And from what I hear, it's now fixed and they're back up for sale. So this was an issue, but it shouldn't be any more. And again, I think Vario as well as Ivan and Judy deserve a lot of credit for how they approach the situation. With that out of the way, let's focus on what I do like here, starting off with the case and how it wears. The case is something I loved from the original. It has a vertical brushing on the sides, as well as a polished top along with a polished bezel. And I think that really helps keep your focus on the dial. But what I really loved was the design here, where when you turn the watch and look at it from the side, it looks like the base of a spire on top of a classic skyscraper, really enforcing that Art Deco inspiration behind it. And here with the chronograph, by adding square pushers rather than round, I think it's a simple addition that ties beautifully into that as well. Another great thing about the watch is how it wears, which again is something it inherited from the original. The smaller case shape, the shorter lug to lug, and the thinner profile make this a watch you can wear with just about anything. Then combine that with aggressively angled lugs and spring bars that are placed near the end of that, as well as a fairly low weight of 62 grams, and you have a watch that wears beautifully on the wrist as well. And I think this is something you can see here on my seven and a quarter inch wrist. Although a lot of that comfort is also thanks to the great strap. And that makes sense when you consider they started out as a strap company. The Empire comes with a vintage Italian leather strap and you do get your choice of colors. They sell these straps separately for 42 bucks and I think they're worth every penny. It's a great quality leather that's soft and flexible from the get go combined with good hardware, as well as an aggressive taper down to 16 before the buckle. Which makes this a strap that I think you're going to keep on the watch for as long as you can. And if you'll notice that on my original Empire, I still have the stock strap on it. And if you know anything about me and the channel, that's kind of a rarity with my watches. But if for some reason you do want to change things up, this strap does have quick release. And even if it didn't, the watch itself is drilled lugs. So you can easily swap things out. And that leaves us to talk about the dial and the design of the Empire, which is really the watch's true strength. At the center of every Empire is this mesmerizing kaleidoscopic ring, which is then framed by a raised larger outer ring, which contains the Arabics. On the chronograph version, you of course have the addition of two sunburst subdials, where the one at the 9 is for the minutes elapsed on the chrono, and the one at the 3 is a 24 hour subdial. So note that there is no regular running seconds. And in my book, that is a bit of a negative, but at the same time, that's just how this particular mecha quartz movement is set up. In fact, I think it's kind of a rarity to find a mecha quartz movement with a running seconds. Now, some people may look at this watch and be reminded of the newer Long Jeans Heritage Classic Chrono, to the point that Ivan's been asked multiple times if the Long Jeans was an inspiration, and in a recent Facebook post, he said it was. But in an interesting twist, the original Empire actually predates the Long Jeans. It's just that when he saw the Long Jeans, he liked it and it made him think about making a chrono version of his own design. Although one aspect of the Long Jeans he left out is the tachymeter. Instead, there's a very thin detailed chapter ring on the outer edge. Now, I think it's debatable on if the chronograph is going to be less useful without it, and especially considering a lot of people don't even know how to use it. But one thing that isn't debatable is that leaving it out leads a cleaner, more symmetric design, which is then paired with the Empire's signature handset. And this is something else that I really love from the original, as I think it pairs nicely with the Art Deco inspiration. Although I will say that I like the blued version on my auto much more than the gold on the chrono. And I'm actually a little bit disappointed there isn't a version of the chrono with blued hands. Regardless, it's a gorgeous design. It's not simple, and I'm not even sure I'd say it's clean. It's complex, yet there is a beauty and elegance in its complex symmetry. And the subdials of the chronograph integrate into the design beautifully. In fact, it's almost like they were there the whole time. But let's move on to what I found to be just okay here, and this is really more of a nitpicking section. First up, let's talk about the movement, or at least movement with respect to price. After that, we'll talk value. So for the movement, Vario went with a VK64 Mecha Quartz movement. It's a great movement, one that gives you the reliability of a quartz with the response of a mechanical chrono. There's no question about it, it's great reliable movement, and in many ways it's probably the perfect choice here. 
Yet, I think there are going to be some comments and maybe some discussion to be had if they should have gone with a Seagull mechanical movement. The Seagull movements have been used a lot more lately, and they're becoming a really popular choice among enthusiasts. Yet at the same time, so are the Mecha Quartz movements. I honestly don't think there's really a right or wrong side to this. It's really just going to boil down to personal choice. My own opinion is that they made the right choice here, just because the Mecha Quartz movements have more of a proven track record for reliability. And when you're a small brand and you're shipping worldwide, using the Mecha Quartz means there are a lot less potential headaches to deal with. And lastly, let's talk value. Vario is selling these for 298 US which for some people may seem like a lot for a quartz watch, and that's always the eternal debate when you're talking quartz or mecha quartz. But I think that's right in line with where the market's at these days. For comparables, Dan Henry's always been the go-to for vintage-inspired pieces, and their mecha quartz watches are going for about 270. But it's important to note that their watches only have a sapphire-coated mineral crystal, where the Vario is full sapphire. Plus, the Vario comes with their great straps, and those I think are at least worth 30 bucks, if not more. For other watches to compare to, you can check out Undone for about 289, as well as a Yema Rallygraph for 349. So to sum it all up, this is exactly what I've come to expect from Vario. Something a little different, yet interesting and affordable. Vario took the beauty and elegance of their Art Deco empire and combined it with the functionality of a Mecha Quartz. Maintaining the spirit of the original while adding additional beauty through symmetric complexity. A dress chronograph may not be for everyone, but for those that are interested or even simply intrigued, it's hard to go wrong with this Art Deco beauty. Now, as usual, let me know your thoughts on this one down below, the Vario Empire chronograph. And if it's not already out, keep an eye out for another review of this watch by Dave over at Just The Watch. I know he received a watch as well and he should have his review coming out. That way, if you're interested, you can get another opinion, as well as check out another colorway. And as always, if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. I'm Shane, this is Relative Time, see you next time.